Welcome back everyone. In today's episode of the Market Bear Metrics Macro Analysis Series, we're going to be talking about sector rotations. Now, sector rotation refers to the flow of funds between the various sectors of the market. When we gauge the relative performance of the various sectors, we can get an idea of not only which sectors of the market are going to be more attractive for new investment opportunities, but it's also going to clue us in as to the big picture themes that are driving the market. Specifically, when we make note of which sectors of the market are showing leadership, it gives us a really good indication as to which phase of the business cycle, of the short-term debt cycle we're we're in. This is something I think is overlooked by far too many individual investors. When we have a clear picture of you know what's driving the market and the central themes at play, we can have a lot more conviction in the investments that we seek out. And this is the sort of thing that helps take you from a one-dimensional stock picker looking for the next Amazon in 1999 to a macro strategist that can position a portfolio based on the big picture central themes that we see driving the financial markets. And sector rotation is one more tool that we can use to help develop this macro strategy. So without further ado, let's jump in and learn some more about sector rotations. <laughs> So again, sector rotation just involves the flow of funds from one sector of the economy to another. They're indicative of the current state of the business cycle and are useful to investors through a demonstration of shifting trends and flow of funds between sectors. So what does that mean? It just means that when we monitor and measure the relative performance of the various sectors of the market, we get an idea of which sectors are showing leadership. When we know which sectors are showing leadership, it's indicative of which phase of the business cycle we're in. And I know that might sound confusing at first, but it all makes sense when you put it in the context of the fact that different sectors are going to respond differently to different phases of the business cycle. They're going to respond differently to varying economic conditions or business climates, right? So for example, in higher interest rate environments, you might expect certain companies in the financials sector to outperform, specifically banks, right? Because the higher interest rates are, the more profitable banks are gonna be because they can charge higher interest rates on the loans that they're underwriting. On the other hand, other sectors of the market will probably underperform in higher interest rate environments. Most of the other sectors, in fact, because consider the technology sector, for example. Technology is highly growth oriented. If interest rates are higher, that means that there's less access to capital to fund new projects, new research and development to develop new technologies and innovation. So a higher interest rate environment would actually be detrimental to the technology sector. So when we consider a macroeconomic variable like interest rates, we can forecast the likely effect that's going to have on the various sectors of the market. But if we put that in reverse and we just measure and track the performance of each of the sectors, not only does it imply the current economic conditions, but it also lets us know how investors are reacting to it. Both in institutional and individual investors, how they're allocating their funds and which sectors of the market their funds are flowing into and out of. So it combines sort of the economic conditions and how each sector is likely to respond to those economic conditions, but also investor behavior in light of the economic conditions, which is just as important of a piece of the puzzle. So before we dive into each of the individual sectors and you know what it means when each of these sectors shows leadership, uh, first, let's talk about how we measure and monitor these sectors using the market barometer. So popping into the software, here we are in the macro analysis section, and this is the sector rotation tab. So essentially what we're looking at here is all of the um, spider select sector ETFs. Now, I know this is kind of a lot to take in, especially if you're unfamiliar with each of the ticker symbols for the various ETFs, but just know that if you hover over any of the charts, you'll get this tool tip that'll remind you what each of the tickers is. So XLK is technology, XLI is industrials, XLF is financials, so on and so forth. So the whole idea here is that we're looking at percent change over various time frames. So the topmost chart here is the one month return. Uh, so that's percent change for each sector of the market over the previous 30 days. Below that is three month return. So you get the quarterly look at the percentage gain. Below that is six month return and below that is 12 month return. So what we're looking for here is the changing positions of the various sectors across the different time frames. So let's take a look at the flow of funds between the various sectors of the market to see if that tells us anything about where we are in the business cycle and what's going on in the markets. 
So for example, in the 12 month return, the top gainer over the last 12 months has been the technology sector, XLK, with a 12 month return of 60.38%. So over the last year, technology has really outperformed the rest of the market. Now, if we move up the infograph here to the red chart, the six month return, we see that XME actually moves into the number one position. So it's starting to show market leadership, XME being the metals and mining ETF. So that's interesting. You know, we're seeing that over the 12 month time frame, technology has been the strongest sector, but that funds are starting to flow into the metals and mining sector and out of the technology sector. When we move up the chart even further, the three month return also shows XME in the number one position and technology falling even further down in the rankings. And that's reflected again in the one month return. So momentum clearly moving into metals and mining and out of technology. And those are just two of the sectors. We have 12 different sectors that we're tracking in this infograph here, each of which and the relative movement of them across these time frames, giving us a different clue as to what's going on in the big picture. So we've already determined that funds are starting to flow out of the technology sector to favor the metals and mining sector. But let's jump in and talk a little bit more about how each of these sectors is likely to react to the various phases of the business cycle so that we can gain more insight as to what that information might mean how we can interpret it what the likely future direction of the stock market is as well as you know which phase of the business cycle we're in so looking at the graph here we have essentially the business cycle along the x-axis right so that's the trough expansion market peak contraction and you know coming full cycle back to another trough and again if you're if you don't know much about the business cycle i encourage you to watch the uh, previous video in this series on the business cycle but essentially what we have is the sectors of the market that are likely to show leadership at various points along the business cycle. So when we're first coming out of a trough and into the early expansionary phase of the business cycle, you tend to see consumer discretionary and technology stocks leading the way higher. Um, in the later expansionary phase, you start to see leadership by industrials and basic materials. Finally, at a market peak, you tend to see energy and consumer staples leading as it rolls over into the early contractionary phase. After that, you get healthcare and utilities leading the way, followed by financials, which brings us full cycle back to another trough. Now, this is an idealized archetype, a simplified look at how the sectors tend to react to various stages of the business cycle. So think of this as a guideline as opposed to a rule because things rarely work out exactly how they're supposed to work out right and that's specifically why i like to track and monitor their performance of the etfs themselves of the sector etfs themselves because it gives us a clear picture of what is happening not of what we think is supposed to happen so once we've determined what is happening, which sectors of the market are showing favor and where the momentum is moving in the market, we can use this chart as a guideline, a framework to interpret what those movements mean. For example, earlier we determined that you know, momentum is moving into the metals and mining sector and starting to wane from the technology sector. Well, then we could use that information in light of our guideline here and determine, okay, well, what does that mean? What does that imply about which phase of the business cycle we're in? And then by extension of that, what is the likely future direction of the stock market based on the current phase of the business cycle? So let's quickly talk about the different stages of the business cycle and why each of these sectors is likely to show favor along those different stages of the business cycle. So in the beginning of the cycle, the expansionary phase is characterized by GDP growth. So the consumer discretionary, technology, industrials, and basic materials sectors all stand to benefit from GDP growth. So especially consumer discretionary and technology, when GDP growth begins to turn up, those are gonna be the first types of businesses that really feel the effects and respond to GDP growth. For example, the consumer discretionary sector is characterized by companies that provide goods and services that aren't necessarily essential, but that consumers are likely to purchase if and when they have extra money in their pockets. So at the beginning of a new expansionary phase in the economy, 
um, consumers are more likely to have extra money in their pockets and are going to be more prepared to purchase those items that they might not have been able to purchase during the contractionary and trough phases of the business cycle. So consumer discretionary stocks are likely to have a favorable tailwind in a new early expansionary phase of the business cycle. Companies in the technology sector are also likely to do well during the expansionary phase of the business cycle. As GDP growth and the relatively stable rate of inflation that's typical of the expansionary phase are likely to provide a tailwind for the sector. Later in the expansionary phase of the business cycle, the industrials and basic materials sectors tend to show leadership. Now this has to do with a couple of things. First of all, at this point, GDP has been growing for a while and companies in both of these sectors are starting to feel the beneficial effects of that GDP growth. Second of all, companies in these two sectors are gonna be more sensitive to changes in inflation. So as inflation starts to pick up, the price for some of the commodities that the industrials and basic materials companies deal in, such as steel, copper, aluminum, these types of things, starts to get more expensive. So their profitability starts to become more robust. And that's why they tend to show leadership at this phase in the business cycle. After that, as inflation picks up even more, you might start to see the energy sector showing leadership. At this point, GDP has been growing for quite some time. So demand is high. Demand for oil and energy in particular is high. As the economy starts to heat up and inflation is on the rise, the price of oil is likely to increase as well. So when you have strong demand for oil and increasing price for oil, that's going to be extremely beneficial to energy companies. So when you start to see energy taking leadership in the market, it's a warning sign that you're probably approaching a market peak. If inflation continues to rise, interest rates are also likely to rise and that will have the effect of dampening economic output. And that's going to roll us over into a new contractionary phase of the business cycle. So at that point, you might start to see leadership from consumer staples, healthcare, utilities, and eventually financials as well. So why would consumer staples companies tend to show leadership as we roll over into a new contractionary phase of the business cycle? Well, that has a lot to do with the goods and services that consumer staples companies provide. These are essential items that consumers can't do without. So regardless of what's going on in the economy or what's going on in their checkbook, they're going to make room in their budget to purchase these items. So while, you know, a contractionary phase phase and declining GDP and high interest rates might not be beneficial to consumer staples companies. Consumer staples companies are generally going to outperform the rest of the market at this point, And that's why it's going to show leadership as we enter a new contractionary phase of the market. Same is true for healthcare. You know, people are always going to have to pay for healthcare, regardless of what's going on in the economy and what's going on in their checkbooks. So there's always going to be room in the budget for consumer staples and healthcare companies, and those companies are going to outperform the rest of the market whenever the economy is generally doing bad. Utilities companies also tend to perform well at this point in the business cycle, mostly because of the fact that utilities companies have very steady, uh, reliable revenue streams, right? Because society Society needs power, we need water, so on and so forth. So much like consumer staples and healthcare, people are always going to need utilities and those reliable income streams are going to outperform the rest of the market whenever you know the economy is generally in decline. Finally, you have financials on this side of the business cycle. Later in the contractionary phase, it tends to show leadership. Again, that has a lot to do with the fact that financials tend to outperform in higher interest rate environments, particularly banks. So again, these are all guidelines. This is a framework and a way to contextualize what we're finding with the relative performance of the ETFs in our sector rotations infograph over in the market barometer. So let's hop over there now that we have a little bit better of an idea of how to interpret these things and can Consider where we might be in the business cycle right now and which corners of the market, which sectors of the market might be the most attractive at this very moment. Now, we've already determined that momentum is kind of waning from the technology sector and is moving into XME, the metals and mining sector. Uh, I know we didn't see that on our chart here, but the metals and mining sector is pretty well aligned with the basic materials sector in that it's going to be relatively sensitive to changes in inflation because a lot of the companies in these sectors deal with commodities that are themselves inflation sensitive. So even if we're not seeing inflation picking up in our economic data, CPI and PCE, for example, when we see sectors of the market 
that are inflation sensitive starting to take leadership, that's an indication that there's inflation. You have to remember that economic data is typically lagging and that the stock market is a leading indicator of the economy. So whenever you're seeing movements in this sector rotation infograph, um, leading what's happening in the economic data, it's representative of what investors as a collective whole are forecasting for the future of the economy and the future direction of the stock market. So in our example here, you know, it would seem that inflation sensitive sectors of the market are starting to take leadership. So even though that right now in the macroeconomic analysis section, it doesn't look like inflation is really picking up. We're seeing that investors and investor behavior is such that the collective whole is pricing in future inflation. Now that is a deep insight. And one of the things that I really like about this sector rotation tool is that it's showing us in real time where funds are actually flowing in the market, which sectors of the market are actually showing favor. So it takes away the idealism and the what should be happening and replaces it with this is what is happening. So really we could go on and on about what we're seeing here until we're blue in the face, you know, analyzing the positions and movements of the various sectors along this this infograph and what the implications of those movements are. But for the sake of keeping this video on the shorter side, we're not going to do that today. So the best thing that you can do to make the most use out of this information is to, first of all, really understand each of the sectors of the market. What are the underlying fundamental factors that drive and affect the performance of the various sectors of the market? And then use the sector rotation tool here to keep you on top of which sectors are showing leadership. What are the implications of that sector showing leadership as far as the phase of the business cycle that we're in and the likely future direction of the stock market. So one of my favorite things about performing sector rotation analysis is that it's a huge piece of the puzzle that is easily attainable as far as forming a sound macroeconomic opinion. It helps us look in real time what's going on in the economy by way of the stock market. The more informed our opinion of the macroeconomic outlook, the better our investment decisions are gonna be. Performing sector rotation analysis like this also helps us to narrow down the research that we're doing. For example, in our analysis today, we found that XME, the metals and mining sector, was showing favor. So the next step might be to use the market barometer to filter down to only those companies that are in the metals and mining sector, and then to go on from there, performing fundamental and technical analysis to determine which of those companies in the metals and mining sector look the most attractive. And that's what the top-down approach to investing is all about. First, you form a macroeconomic opinion. Then you identify what the best investment vehicles are within those sectors of the market by way of fundamental and technical analysis. So if you guys want to learn more about sector rotations and forming a macro opinion, I encourage you guys to check out our weekly macro overview videos where I'll be going through the macroeconomic section of the market barometer to identify the developing trends and drivers of the market by way of macro economic data and our sector rotation tool here. But for now, if you guys like this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, leave any comments and questions down below. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys in the next video.